right. I'm here right now and this is a video about how I'm stitching a sweater, making some new samples for Black Bomb. Black Bomb BB, you see it right there. See over here is um, the latest sweater that we are making for Black Bomb, and I already started with um, the front side, the back side, and now I'm continuing with the sleeves. So for the sleeves, we have these two panels, and we have another panel that we put on top of the sleeve to reinforce it. It's like a quilted panel. And there will be also a logo on top of it, you will see when I'm stitching it. So this has all been cut with these scissors right here. Okay, so here a quick overview for all the labels that we use. So we have the, this is the sleeve label. This is the main label. We will attach a size label. This is the small one here. Then we have a Made in China label and a wash label. So and this is the inner neck tape. We need 20 centimeters of here, of this one. So we will cut it according to 22 centimeters. So because you still have to fold it. So we just cut it right. So see you the next step. All right, I'm back in the sewing machine. And now I will stitch the neck tape. We just saw this piece. And this has to be attached to the inside of the collar. Okay, so first we stitch the front side of the of the neck. It's a 0.5 millimeter operation, single line stitch. So we start first here, fade in, and then we go once around the front side. I have to be very careful because it's a cover stitch. It comes with a contrast color. This time the main color is beige and the contrast color is black. So it's very visible if you make a mistake. It's very easy to see that it's um, crooked lines or something like this. So you have to be very careful with cover stitches because this is what the people later see. Whether you're in the shop or you're wearing it, you don't want like crooked cover stitches, this is always a bad idea. So we just go once around, make sure that it looks good, that no yarn is tearing apart. If you have thread breaks, needle breaks or anything, that's what nobody likes to see. So then we stop it and I'll just show you how the neck looks from the front. And now we have to take care of the inside of the neck. So now we're doing the inner neck tape and this has also to be very clean because we want this to be looking as advanced as possible. We are doing name brand clothing here. We're not doing some flea market or whatever, um, supermarket clothing. We just want the best of the best. So here the distance is 0 0.1. You can be a little bit faster with the machine because the machine is adjusted well. Again, we have a contrast stitch. The tape is white, our stitch is our stitching yarn is black. At the end, we need to fold it to make sure that um, the ends are not um, showing out. I think we can do it very easily and then continue. Let it run. Always make sure you have enough bo bottom thread to go through to not have like thread breaks in between because that makes it look terrible. Especially for samples, you want the best look. So this is the top side and now we will do the bottom. Same thing. This is an automatic machine, a computerized machine. If you have one of the older types, it's a little bit more difficult. 
but it's also doable, of course, because this has not been, it's not a new thing. So make it as clean as possible, start, reverse, and then go all the way. That run a bit quicker. Later in production will be really quick because that's when the timing counts. So then the finished tape looks like something like this. So the next step is to attach a label in the middle. It's size L what we do here. So you can just do it in a whole line, start from the first label to the last. So we have to adjust the machine. Exactly go according to the target. So then we feed the machine. So we don't want to miss the space. It must be exactly accurate, otherwise it looks terrible. So now we caught this and then we just go through to the very end. So this is the first one. Looks perfect to me. Size L on the bottom. Cut it. Alright, so this is how it looks after I finish stitching and I think it's quite clean. So you see the size, you see the name, size L, so uh, this is how it's got to look. This is a standard for our labels. Okay, so here I'm right now attaching the sleeve to the body. So I'm using a different machine. This is the, the lock stitch machine, the edge lock. Make sure that we catch every part of the sleeve and it's not going to be too short or too long. It's got to be the right size also. All the pieces have been cut accordingly and yeah, it will be fun to fix it. So we have to go through the middle of the, of the shoulder point. This time we have a panel on that piece. And here is where the ends are meeting have to make sure that everything goes the right way. We have a little bit of curvature. So this curvature can be tricky, but um, since we experience, it won't be. We have several colors, so we have to be sure that everything comes in the, in the right position. Otherwise, one sleeve will be slightly looking different than the other. We don't want that. We want them to be even. So, let's continue here. And the same procedure as we did with the right sleeve, now on the left sleeve. We have to here, fade it in. I change the perspective so that you have a better look at how things are going in. So you see, here is the needle and here is the feet and this is the place where it knife is so it gets cut here. So let's start. Always got to be sure that it, it's in the right position, that nothing is over or underlapping and then from there we go. So this is fleece fabric, it's a little bit heavier. So you need to make sure that the knife is always um, up to date or sharpened. And what we make a 0.5 millimeter cut here. You see it is going down here. And we continue. Meet it by the middle. Very important. Otherwise it will have an effect on the shape. And we can already see it will fit exactly with the length. So, we just continue here, make our curvature here for the shoulder. Here we go. 
Okay, so the sleeves have been attached and it starts looking like a, like a sweatshirt. So we have now the sleeve panels that we stitch on top of those. Back to the lock stitch machine. Okay, so now we do the cover stitches for the sleeve. Also here, 0 0.5 centimeters. It's got to be clean. So we do it a bit slower, so you can also see like how we have to meet that line. Again, we have a black yarn thread here, so we have to be very careful, otherwise it's very visible that we run in circles or curves or Whatever what we don't want here, we want it to be clean, we want to be good looking, so it looks fresh. Maybe I have around this one here. It would have been a bit smarter for me to start the light next time I will have an extra light here, but my eyes are good enough that I can see at least that there's nothing stuck under it. And the stitching is something that you need to be able to do while you're sleeping. First thing when you get up at five in the night. Five in the morning. Easy going, we're on the other side. Let me get started here. Same story, same story. always make it look beautiful so everybody who's wearing it knows where they got it from know which brand this is know that the brand comes out the right way no sloppiness because we all want to look cool you know look good you don't want to spend money on half baked things we keep continuing here so a lock stitch machine is probably one of the most important machines in the factory because you run it for almost everything All cover stitches are usually made with a lock stitch machine. So basically when you have a picture of this sewing machine in, in mind, then this machine. So here we go. Now we fix the sleeve panels. So work on the sleeve panel right now. So this panel also has to be stitched 0 0.5 centimeters. So here we go. We can go a bit quicker. We have some curves here, so the curves need to be careful. So every three steps we have to change the direction until we made it into the right direction. Like here, and then we just speed up. You can also use a piece of chalk and draw the lines to make sure that everything is actually in line. You don't want to be on the wrong side or... This is a sound when the machine runs at high speed. All the time when I had all these machines at home, so, so when I had a new idea at night, I would just Great, get up and start stitching. Also, when we encountered some new styles in the, in the factory and people were not quite understanding of how the style has to come out, then I would get up at night, fix a sample, give it to my staff, 
so that they were clear how something special needs to look like. Especially for the fall winter season, these panels give it a better edge, make the sleeve a bit thicker. So if you don't want to wear a jacket on top of this, you can also wear the sweater by itself. It will also bring it to the winter, keep you warm at least. Pull a little bit to make sure that Out the right way. Looks flat. Pocket. Cut it. After ironing, this will be very, very good looking. Okay, so now we have our label on the sleeve. It is 22 centimeters from the top. So it is this place here. We hold the finger here. And we put the label here. It should be in the very middle. We measure again. It's gotta say 22 centimeters. And here we are, 22 centimeters. So now we have to stitch it on four sides. So let's get started. First, to attach it. Sure that is exactly the right amount of stitches, so we do probably last one manually. So turn it round. Go left to right. Again, the last stitch, it's okay, so we turn it around again, bottom to top, it's always easier because the material is not stretching top to bottom, it's stretching left to right, so there's a light a little bit. Careful, you have to be careful always. One stitch going the wrong way, and the project can get the scissor. So, with the scissor, you have to open it up again. Okay, yeah, probably I went one too far. So, I get one back, one manually forward, and then I uh, do the last round to close it. And cut. Now we have the label here on the sleeve. Our sweatshirt now is almost a sweatshirt, so now we have to close the, the sides, which is like one of the last steps before we attach the bottom rib. So we have to also make sure everything is exactly cut right before. And now we close the side. Also very careful that we find the joint pieces and we just go straight here. We don't have things overlapping. I think for stitching the items, locking the sides is always the most fun because it goes so quick. The worker that only locks the sides has the best job, I think. 
So every day is just like locking the side, nothing else. So we run this one a bit quicker than the first one. Because now we are more convenient with it. Here we go. Nothing overlapping, underlapping. Just right in the place. Move out the residue. So now we can call this almost a sweatshirt. We just need to attach the rib. Last steps, we attach the, the rib to the sleeve opening. 0 0.5 centimeter cut. And make sure this stitching is going into the right position. There we go. Usually this can be done very quickly. I'm just doing it very slow so you can see it a bit easier and also I do it a lot more with precision. So here we are at the almost at the end point or starting point. Depends on from which angle we want to see it. And one more. Always be careful because here in the end point it gets very thick. So that's like a good place where needle breaks occur. So this is one rib. Quick check if everything has been stitched right. From what I can see, ah, oh, this is a small hole. So this one needs to be redone at this point. This happens, so we just go through again. And that's the fix. Cut it, make it clean. Okay, so here's the absolute last step, and this is the bottom rib. So here also we need to be extremely careful that we don't make holes. I just demonstrated it in the when it came to the sleeve. No holes please, otherwise we can just cut it open and do it again. We don't want to do that. Here we can go extremely fast. And this is what these machines are made for, to go extremely fast for these steps. Here it's not exactly in line. It should have been ironed before. I just went at it after cutting. In the end we will iron this piece and then after that I will hang it on a mannequin and you can see the finished work. So here you go. a little bit off direction. I must keep it straight. I must also keep within the 0 0.5 centimeters. Everything else will make it look unprofessional and unclean. So stretch a little bit. A little bit like a chainsaw because we're just locking the edges. We don't kill anybody, we don't cut any trees. We're just making a sweater. Okay, we are made all around, nothing got stuck. 
and that's it. I will now add another line on the bottom as a cover stitch. Okay, so this video is a series out of many that will follow and um, yeah, we hopefully can provide you some more content. Um, you can see how we make our clothing. You can see that um, here at Black Bomb Clothing, we live this style. We make this stuff by ourselves. We are as authentic as possible. We are not just some people who are um, taking some sweatshirts and just printing those with logos. We make everything ourselves. The cuts we develop by ourselves. Um, all the designs is our own development. We are not so much looking at what other companies are doing. And I hope with your support, we don't need to in future because this is exactly what we don't want. We want to stay innovative and maybe others will copy us, but we don't so much want to copy others because we find it kind of boring. It's better to be original than just copy whatever um, the top three brands have been doing and you just offer the same stuff that the top three brands offer for like a couple of hundred dollars for $50 less. I mean, I don't see any logic in that. I want that people in future come here and copy what we do. Um, and yeah, let this guy be the limit. So we almost once run the, the item. And there we meet the line. Great. Fix it and the sweater is finished and now we go to ironing. Okay, so now one of the most underrated parts in garmenting is the ironing. So the ironing is making the shape. And um, I can't say that I'm like the most professional in ironing, but it's the basics that I, of course, need to be familiar with. And of course, we need to make sure that the garment is ironed right before we put it on the mannequin. Otherwise, you will not like the photos afterwards. Also later, you need to fold it, pack the item. Everything must look good, so it must be very well in shape. It must have been already ironed at least once in the right way so that later once it hangs somewhere in the shop it looks the way that you want it to look that you can straight fit it and you straight see that it's matching so we iron the front side first then the back side to make sure that all the panels are flat. It's not so easy always. Especially since we have two layers here. We don't want any waves to be on the garment. It must be as flat as possible. Here we got some waves. These we even them out. On the other side. Also, we have to be very careful with like logos, labels, prints, all these kind of things, because they might be subject to shrinkage. And this is why we always have to read the instructions before we put these on and iron on these, because they might turn out in a way that we don't like it. The front side has pretty much been done. Now we go to the back side, remove some of the yarns, and then iron. The rib must be ironed, otherwise, it's also not keeping its shape. The side seams has to be ironed. Especially like with knitted garments, just as sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, especially t-shirts, they must be ironed, otherwise 
You will not like it to wear those. But we can already see that the shape came out very nice. And you see it on the mannequin in just a few minutes after I cut the yarns. You have to iron with a cotton setting for this clothing. Add some steam, especially in the more tricky parts, it's very required. And backs of the neck, here we use the steam. Mostly steam iron. Always be careful that you don't burn your hands. Of course, when you go to production, this must be three times as fast. So here we go. This looks like. Okay, so this is how the product comes out in the very end. And I think um, it became quite nice. So right now we have to take the photos of each of these and um, yeah, after that it will straight go to the online shop. That's how we always do it. So um, it's super important that we always have the photos quickly because the people can't wait because we live in an Instagram world. So the photos have to be there. Everybody has to find something new and otherwise the brand becomes boring we don't want this to happen so of course we have to first of all set it up the right way make sure that the photo settings come out the right way and then we have to shoot it so this looks very good make a close up so people can see the logos We have to show the back side and of course the side of the item. We have to always show the view from all sides of the body. Right now is the side view. Perfect. The back side. Get a small scissor to cut one piece of yarn, which I didn't see. Remove some of the hairs. This is always happening. Especially with fleece, the hairs are very common. Now we shoot the back side. Still hangs a bit. We don't like this kind of look. straight exactly like the shape is we have the curvature on the back side so this has to be very visible still take off some small elements and the rest we will do in Photoshop Take it a bit closer. Yep. It's too 
close like this there we go and here we have a new product for our current black bomb for winter collection